welcome to St. David's. Uh, we have a lot going on this morning. We're glad that you could join us. And we have the blood drive going on at MACB. We have our Under the Bridge group who are about to go do their ministry. Uh, we're celebrating uh, Ashley Miles uh, this morning. So, so we have a lot going on and we're glad that you all could be here this morning. Glad for all of you joining us uh, online as well. Um, and you can find our full bulletin, follow along with the service on the front page of our website, stdavids.net. Um, also, just as a reminder, we have a lot of new people uh, who, who have been joining us uh, at St. David's. And so in these little black binders on the side, you can get a name tag. I know everybody's favorite thing in the world is name tags, but uh, it really helps us uh, be hospitable uh, to those who are new to our community. Uh, we know their names, they can know our names, so, so please uh, put on the name tag. Um, and please stand with us as we join in singing our opening hymn. <laughs>
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God all to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The children are invited to follow the cross to the children's chapel. You may be seated. As I mentioned, this is uh, the Sunday where we send out our group that is uh, going to be feeding uh, those in need under the bridge. And so we'll say a prayer for them as they go off to do their work. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have called us to be advocates of charity to those in need. We pray that, uh, that these that we send out would be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that you would help us to uh, be inspired by their witness. Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray all this in his name. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men, sent to me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as they began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, then God has given even the, to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 148 together in unison. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord the from the heavens. Praise, Praise him in the heights. Praise, Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise, Praise him, all his hosts. Praise, Praise him, sun and moon. Praise, Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all beasts, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will, mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts 
beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and babies, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants. The children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little 
children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Peter began to explain it to them step by step. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So the other night, I was at an outdoor restaurant. It was actually just as people were arriving for our little in-between, uh, in-between our group gathering the other night. I don't know if anybody else noticed this incident, but we were seated outside. It was a warm evening, uh, but this nice little breeze helped to, you know, cut the heat a little bit, and uh, I looked over at a table near us where a couple had spread out a set of blueprints. Strange place to look through blueprints, but whatever. You know those pads or whatever you call them, they're, they're pretty big, so it took up most of the table. The couple studied these construction plans for a little while, but when the wind started to blow, you know, it made looking through these blueprints pretty difficult. These huge sheets of paper, they just started flying everywhere, blowing all over the place. And eventually, some of their chips and salsa, it's a Mexican restaurant, some of their chips and salsa on the table would spill. So they're frantically grabbing their napkins to wipe the salsa off of all the papers. They had all these plans laid out, and the wind was just not having it. Just quickly ruining their blueprint. We, uh, people in general, are stubborn, some more than others, but we're, we're stubborn. Uh, have you heard of the concept of confirmation bias? Philosopher Francis Bacon says it like this, the human understanding, when it has once adopted an opinion, draws all things else to support and agree with it. And though there be a greater number and weight of instances to be found on the other side, yet these it either neglects or despises not any of you, right? It doesn't apply to you. Meaning this, once you form an opinion, once you settle on what you think about something, it's very difficult to change. Even when presented with data or overwhelming evidence that we might be wrong, we typically hold to our original opinion. People just find things to support their previous conclusions, and they dismiss anything that might point in another direction see how that might be a problem when things change, when there might be new developments, additional information, or a new wind blowing. Peter, Peter has to explain his actions to the community of believers because something new is happening. The disciples had, had gotten word that some Gentiles were being added as believers, being brought into the fold. This portion of Acts describes how Peter defends himself to these new leaders of the faith in Jerusalem. The author of Acts tells us that Peter began to explain it to them step by step. Acts and the Gospel of Luke are written by the same author, um, and this word used for step by step, kathexis, uh, it's also used in Luke chapter 1. Uh, the very beginning, laying out the author's intention, he says, I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write an orderly account, a cathexis, for you. In both uses of the word, both times Luke uses this word, it implies a careful examination of the facts at hand, laying out the whole story 
orderly account will be laid out as testimony to what God is doing. And what's happening in this scene with Peter is pretty alarming for this new faith community. Not being first century Jews, we as modern people, as non-Jewish people, sometimes have difficulty understanding the shock of this development that's taking place. Allowing Gentiles, allowing non-Jews, to be convert can be to be converted to this faith. Modern non-Jewish people often look at this issue in Scripture with just a little bit of judgment. You know, like how could the early church even question the inclusion of non-Jewish folks? What is sometimes not taken into account is that the Jewish people, God's chosen people, they have dealt with a lot. They've fallen victim to invaders, to exile, the, op the object of uh, persecution. The Jewish people had had some difficulty, some falling into idolatry and others mingling their faith with other gods. This is written a lot about in the Old Testament. They had suffered at the hands of others. So as a part of their history and their survival, the Jewish people were set apart by their practices and their way of life. Modern readers often cast judgment on these first century Jewish people for their designation between Jew and Gentile, as if this isn't common in our world today, even in our own culture. I'm from Texas. I know how you know, much of a twist it puts us when non-Texans are, like, moving into town. You get a little grumpy about it. People fear losing their culture, their value system, their identity. Sound familiar? We are not immune to the same sentiments, attitudes, protection of cultural boundaries. The security and the identity of the Jewish people was an understandable concern for them. Allowing outsiders to join this way of believers, these followers of Jesus, was a major step. Peter, knowing the significance of his actions, carefully laid out the facts step by step, explaining this orderly account of why he'd come to the decision that he had. In describing his vision, he shared how all of this happened three times. He said, listen up. I had this dream about the sheep being lowered from heaven to stay with me. It was filled with all these animals. I was told to eat of these animals, not just once, three times. And then he says, the Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. He wanted to show his work, explaining how his discernment came about. How this wasn't just some decision made on a whim, but something found it in the way God was moving in his life. Many times our understanding of discipleship, this whole church thing, re rests on a misconception of a destination. We think that there is a finish line. There's some point in our faith journey that there's just, uh, you know, we're going to have it all together, where everything will be set. If we work hard enough, if we study our Bible hard enough, our faith will be rock solid, and we'll just know all the answers for all eternity. These, you might not say that out loud. Sometimes that's played out subconsciously. But it is evident by how difficult it is to change the minds of people in the church. Let's be honest. Challenging people's notion of God or discipleship or faith, moving people is not easy. Hard enough to get some of you to move to a different pew than yours. You know, that's your pew. Nobody can make you move. So where's the room for the Holy Spirit? When we are unable to make room for the Holy Spirit to transform our lives, to call us to a new understanding, then we're not being faithful. What this story about Peter tells us is that the Holy Spirit is moving in the life of the church. It didn't stop in the book of Acts. Sometimes the Spirit upends our own deeply held thoughts and behaviors. The Spirit often likes to draw us out of our comfort zone. But remember, we're prone to confirmation bias. 
for only taking in information that reinforces our beliefs and our opinions. Good rule of thumb is that when God starts to look too much like you, there might be a problem. We make a lot of plans. We have a blueprint of what our faith should look like, and anything that threatens our carefully constructed boxes doesn't sit well with us. Sometimes the wind blows, covers your plans with chips and salsa. We carry our blueprints of faith in windy territory. Our best laid plans, the Spirit likes to mess them up. So how do we make room for the Holy Spirit? You know, how do we do that? Discernment on how God is moving shouldn't be taken lightly. It requires careful examination and orderly account. Remaining open to the movement of the Holy Spirit is integral to what we're doing. We have to approach change with faithful discernment. Fortunately for us, we are given a measuring stick. You might be thinking, some of you might be thinking, I heard this gospel text recently, and if you came to our Monday Thursday service during Holy Week, you did hear this passage. It comes from the second part of the foot washing story. After Jesus has personally washed the feet of the disciples in that last meal, setting them an example of love, he gives them a new commandment to love one another. We often interpret this text as just a lesson in humility. However, the placement of the foot washing in context with the betrayal by Judas and the prediction of Peter's coming denial, it's clear that Jesus washes the feet of those who are going to betray him. Jesus washes the feet of those who will soon deny him those and the disciples who will abandon him. It's in this context that he challenges his disciples to love one another as he loves them. Because that's the new commandment. This is the example that he sets, this radical demonstration of love. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. It's a pretty tall order. We're not asked to discern the work of the Spirit without help. Because the love we find in Christ is the key. If you're trying to figure out how to come down on an issue that you're discerning, that kind of love is the key. Where is the movement of the Spirit taking us? How is the Spirit challenging us? Most often, the Spirit is prodding us out of our biases, out of our comfort, out of our deeply rooted customs and behaviors, out of our delineations, to be those who love one another, to be those who say, the Spirit told me to go and not to make a distinction between them and us. So we have to ask ourselves, how are you being called to move, to be transformed? What careful plans have you made where this wind has ruined them by spilling salsa all over them? Where is the Spirit guiding you to change and to love as Christ has loved? Amen. to uh, celebrate another baptism today with precious Samantha, so uh, it's an exciting day. No. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? 
Would you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this life, this child in her life in Christ? Yeah. Standing together, let us join with this candidate and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. Continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized in the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and death, sin and born again, may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever.
Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Samantha, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to a new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, the spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized, saying, We receive you into the household of God, and confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and can share with us in his eternal priesthood. Now let's give a hand for the world's newest Christian. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Y'all are not very responsive. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, so we have, like I said, we have a lot going on today. Uh, we still have our uh, blood drive going on. I think there's still a few spots open if you would like to give blood today. Uh, you can kind of go on over to McAllister after um, and, and see if, if they have some spots available. Um, we've been trying to do this twice a year. Not too much, I mean, y'all still need your blood, uh, but there is a great need for, for uh, donations of blood. So uh, as we continue to do this twice a year, I hope that you'll consider giving here at St. Gabriel's. Um, as I said at the beginning of the service, we have a lot of new people uh, at St. David's, and so if you have been uh, started attending in the, in the last year, uh, we're gonna have a newcomer's lunch next Sunday after the service. Uh, for all of you to help you uh, know a, a little bit more some, some other people uh, in the parish and also to, to be engaged in different ministries, to know about the different opportunities we have at the church. Um, each Sunday between the service, uh, starting at 9, we have a breakfast and we have Bible study for the adults and we also have faith formation for the kids. And as always, you are invited to come and take part in that. Um, we need singers. Uh, our our um, choir is back, so if you can sing, uh, you don't have to sing. Amazing, right? If we just we want singers. So if you would like to sing, uh, come and talk to Ben afterwards. He will get you sing. He's helped me, so uh, he can help you as well. Um, I think that's all. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to pray for today? Okay, so this is a moment that I think she's dreaded, uh, but Ashley, come on, come on up here. Ashley has been the head of school here for 14 years, uh, just a few years. Uh, we have the benefit of having uh, not only had Ashley for so long, but uh, head of school before her was here, what, 30 years or something? Uh, Rena DeBose, um, and so I'll, I'll tell you that when I was discerning whether or not to, to accept the call to St. David's, 
I already knew about the school here at St. David's. It has such a trem tremendous reputation uh, in our diocese, and part of that is to the hard work of, of Ashley Miles. She's benefited so many uh, children and students, uh, and she came to our parish to be a parishioner uh, by taking this job to school. So uh, she has been such a blessing to us, and so we wanted to say a little bit of a prayer for her. Um, and so if you would like, if you know Ashley or uh, would like to, to help in this blessing, we invite you to come forward and lay hands on her as we, as we say a prayer. for some more people to come. Uh, also, we invite you to join us after the service in McAllister A. Uh, we have a cake, and we'll embarrass her some more. So, uh, so please join us for that. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servant, Ashley, who has enriched this community and brought gladness to friends and now bless and preserve her at this time of transition. Guide her in the continued use of your gifts. Give her sustenance for temporal and spiritual needs, friends to cheer her way, and a clear vision of the ministry to which you are now calling her. By your Holy Spirit, be present in her pilgrimage, that she may travel with the one who is the way and the truth and the life, Jesus Christ our Lord. I think, uh, I think she deserves a hand for 14 years. time to school by and uh, <laughs> so again come join us for cake uh, after after the service um, one last thing before we start the Eucharistic prayer, um, just as a reminder, we have started uh, drinking from the chalice again, um, and so you can either dip in the chalice as it comes by, you can hold on your wafer and dip it, or uh, you can eat your wafer and drink from the chalice as it comes by. 
If all of that makes you feel incredibly uncomfortable at this point still, uh, that is perfectly fine. Uh, taking just, eating just the wafer is, is taking uh, <coughs> communion uh, fully, so you're not getting uh, half of the Eucharist and just eating the wafer. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body of love of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal name. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
practice session. <laughs>